Dave and I had a great shakeout sale down on the Bripey Passage last week. We had a beautiful day, 10 to 15 knots, and everything went really well, but as expected, a shakeout sale is just that. And coming right to the end of our sale, the halyard on the headsail let go where it hadn't been spliced properly, and the, the headsail landed on the foredeck. So with that, we decided it was time to finish up the day. We hit, powered up and headed into the boat ramp where Baz's keel cable broke, and that did create a bit of excitement around the launching ramp. Now you never know what's just around the corner. And a few weeks back, when I was having a little bit of a shakeout cruise on the Marucci River, just to test out all the systems, coming to the end of that, the phone rang. And quite unexpectedly, I was offered an opportunity to work on a wooden boat project that's very close to my heart. So I'm gonna tell you a bit more about that at the end of this video. Enjoy the video. Subscribe, like, and write your comments below, because that's what keeps the channel alive. Thanks for listening. I put this where it was easy to find, and made it so it was easy to disconnect. And then of course I went searching for it in all the hard places. <laughs> Getting your lifting system all sorted out is one issue. The next thing is making sure everything's lined up. It's very easy to bend your turnbuckles or even snap one off uh, if they snag on the way up. So it's good to have someone spotting as you're actually pulling it up. In this case, my spotter is using the camera. Well, the time has come after five months of hard toil for a shakeout sale in Saffron. We decided to launch at Spinnaker Sound, which is on the southern end of the Bribey Passage. The forecast says we can expect between 10 and 15 knots, which is a really nice breeze for a test sail. Launching off a shallow ramp at low tide is a bit of a challenge with a boat like Saffron that has a stub keel. The low configuration of the newly restored trailer makes launching a breeze even under these conditions. It was amazing just how easy it was to push her off the trailer, which is easily handled single-handed. The little Yamaha four-stroke pushed us almost silently out past the marina with all its beautiful boats out into the southern end of the Bribey Passage. You'll notice in some of the shots that saffron hasn't been painted up yet. I've left that until after I've had the shakeout sale so that uh, if any of the fittings and fixtures need moving, we can make adjustments before the paint goes on. The, uh, the motor's so far down now that it, it, um, the propeller slips it's underneath. It's actually the, working. Well, it slips underneath the rudder when the rudder's up. Um, when it's down, I can't tell you. If Baz's Ultimate 18 is looking a bit low in the water, well, it is. He's got three children on board and, uh, and three adults. They've just had uh, a great time. Uh, I think that's been about three nights up the Bribey Channel. Uh, it's a really beautiful place if you ever get a chance to go there. You can camp on the inside, on the western side of the island, and you get some of the most amazing sunsets that you will ever see there.
First impressions of sailing the Sunmate? She's a great little sailboat. We were well and truly overpowered in the 15 knot gusts when they came through because we had the full main and the full Genoa up. I'm guessing that the Genoa is 130, 140 percent. So you can see me getting overpowered there. Managed to get the main up quite uh, quickly and easily. However, I forgot to put the battens in the sail so it wasn't working as efficiently as it's possible. This part of the Bribey Passage is about 0.3 of a nautical mile across. So it gave us just a nice broad reach back and forth with plenty of tacking practice for Dave. When I was going over the rigging, I noticed that the splicing at the end of the halyard was uh, a little bit uh, subpar and I should have got it fixed then and there. But I ignored it and then forgot about it and it wasn't until the end of our sailing day that it let go and uh, the headsail dropped to the foredeck. Getting the rigging churned is a bit of an ongoing process. They say in the manual that the mast should lean back about three to four inches of rake. So I think we got close to that. Uh, there was very little weather helm despite the fact that we were uh, massively overpowered at times. And there we are leaving Dave in his ultimate 18 in our wake. I think if he didn't have such a big load, he'd be a serious contender. Go Baza! <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, Barry? What's up? Broken wind cable on the keel. <laughs> no good. When Barry's keel cable snapped, his 240 kilogram centre board swung forward with tremendous force bashing against the front of the centre case and punching a hole in it. It's going to be a very tricky repair, so we'd appreciate any ideas. Well, it turned out to be a very enjoyable day on the water. It was a great shakeout sail. We've discovered a few adjustments that we've got to make here and there. The raising and lowering of the motor is pretty clunky, so that's got to be sorted. And certainly we've got to get a bit quicker at getting the mast up. The launching and the retrieval was excellent. It was great to have a day on the water with Dave, getting to know him and learning a few of the ropes. And also to catch up with Bazza was a real highlight of the day. Barry's YouTube channel is called Venture Australia 4x4, where he'll be publishing his version of today's events. Many long hours have gone into the Sunmade project. She's a great boat with very strong bones. The first thing you need to consider when you're buying a project boat as a trailer sailor is what condition is the trailer in? Then look at uh, structural issues to do with the hull. In this case, I had to cut out the floor and replace it to make it stronger than it ever was. The electronics have been set up for some serious coastal sailing. I was planning on doing some extended trips but uh, circumstances have changed. You never know what's just round the corner. The cabin top was soft on this little sun maid. The foam, 45 years old, had gone all powdery and broken down. So I had to repack re the foam and now she's strong and solid as ever. The Mrs. Hewan Pine bedhead has taken a mortal blow. You might remember that we sacrificed a small piece of the hue and pine bedhead 
to replace a lost tiller in moonlight. Just as I was giving the Sunmade project her first splash, I received a phone call. It was an amazing opportunity to take on a wooden boat project, which I'll be telling you more about later, but it's going to need a bit more hue and pine. Mm -hmm.